So the official trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has just dropped and man, this looks like a buffet of spider people. Like there are dozens of Spider-Man, different variants, one that we know and ones that we have not even seen before. And I'm here in this video to try my best and point them out. Now let's go over the official synopsis for this film before I proceed with everything and break down some Easter eggs in the beginning before we get to that later in the video. Now it reads, and I quote, after reuniting with Gwen Stacy, Brooklyn full-time friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is catapulted across the multiverse where he encounters a team of spider people charged with protecting his very existence. But when the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat, Miles finds himself pitted against the other spiders and must redefine what it means to be a hero so he can save the people that he loves most. Now that's an interesting plot and as the villain of the movie is the spot, here's what the producers told Total Films. And I quote, the spot is an interesting villain because he seems like a joke. But when you really look at his powers, there's an incredible potential. His ability to open portals across dimensions sets him up perfectly for the Spider-Verse. He's the villain of the next two films and let's just say he and Miles are connected in surprising ways, end quote. So it looks like not only is the spot who's going to be voiced by Jason Schwarzman, Going to be the main villain in the movie. The third movie beyond the Spider Verse is also going to see him return as the big baddie, which probably means that they are not going to be able to defeat him in this movie. They are not going to win the fight. Now, them saying Miles and the Spot are connected makes me think that what if it's another Miles from a different universe or maybe someone he knows, maybe his father, mother, maybe it's even Peter Parker, which is maybe going to complicate matters and maybe be one of the reasons that lead to the Civil War and all that. Now, in regards to why Miguel Spider Man 2099 is, you know, <laughs> so pissed off and after Miles along with the other Spider Man, I think that it has to do with his daughter as we see this shot with him staring at a video of him and her. Her foul name being Gabriela, probably short for Gabriela. So maybe, just like Kingpin wanted to use the multiverse to find his wife Vanessa in another universe, Miguel also wants to do the same as maybe she died. And Miles and Gwen are in the middle of that and that's why he's chasing after them. They probably have something that can stop all that. And maybe the spider people could also benefit from that, you know, the multiverse going chaotic. Or maybe using the spot in a way that could benefit them. Maybe try to gain something that they also lost or want. And maybe Miles and Gwen also want to close the multiverse for good to stop the spot from traveling through them. But the main thing is that it has to do with Miles since they are all hell-bent on capturing him. And as the makers of the film even said, the spot and Miles are connected. And also, the trailer shown at CinemaCon suggested that the events of the first movie left a door open in the multiverse, which villains are using to travel through between and into other dimensions and universes. So yeah, it seems that Miguel O'Hara is going to be the antagonist and maybe see reason and help out by the end. We'll wait and see. Now let's get to identifying these variants of Spider-Man. Of course, I know that's why you mainly clicked on this video. Let's start from the top. We have Spider-Man 2099. We've already seen this Spider-Man, real name Miguel O'Hara, who's going to be voiced by Oscar Isaac. In the comics, he's a scientist and will end up with his DNA being 50% of a spider and become 2099 Spider-Man with the help of his AI program, Layla, helping him out with his hero job. So since he's from the future, his suit is more, you know, techie. Don't know if, if that's even a word, but it's kind of like Tom Holland's Spidey suit from Tony Stark, but more. Now, apart from his iconic red and deep blue suit, he's also going to be wearing a purple and yellow suit as well. Now, next, we have Peter B. Parker. He's making a return and is now a dad. As we saw him reunited with MJ in the last movie, his daughter in the comics is called Mayday Parker and she grows up to become Spider-Girl after inheriting Peter's power and there's even a concept art of her that was shown. We now have Spider-Woman, real name Jessica Drew, a badass who shows that, yeah, even if she's heavily pregnant, she can still F you up. She's going to be voiced by Issa Rae, but it seems like she's a variant of this character because the original Jessica Drew, apart from her sharing a Spider Woman name and half of her powers, she doesn't have any other thing in common with him. Like, she wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider, nor does she swing on a web. Like, one of her power sets is that she can fly. But this version of her, we can clearly see that she shoots webs from her fingertips and rides a motorcycle and appears to be fighting a variant of Vulture who is brown instead of green and is going to be voiced by Joe Matacone. Now, Spider Woman is going to be one of the spiders who will side with Miles and Gwen in the Civil War between the spider people. 
Next, we have Spider Punk, whose concept art was also shown to the public. It's already been confirmed to appear in the movie and is going to be voiced by Daniel Kaluja. In the comics, Hobby Brown, who is a British, and into punk rock culture, a homeless teenager who gets his powers by being infected by radioactive waste illegally dumped by Norman Osborn. Spider Man India is also going to be in the movie. Producers Chris Miller and Phil Lord have also confirmed. Spider Man is also going to be in the movie. Producers have also confirmed that they have made designs for the character. So maybe we will see him. Like, if you don't know the character, he was in the 1978 Japanese Spider Man series. He doesn't have any powers, he just uses his tech and machines that he has and techniques, of course, to you know be and act like Spider Man. Now let's get to the meat of it all. Some of these spider people are going to be hard to pinpoint, others are going to be original creations so we are not going to know, know who they are till the movie comes out. So let's just start from upside down, no let me flip it. We have someone who looks to be in the classic spider-man suit, maybe the original spider-man but it also looks like Andrew Garfield's spider-man, you know his suit from the amazing spider-man 2 specifically with the big eyes. The one next to him looks like a woman, seems like the velocity suit from the playstation game but with a white spider-man logo converging downwards it looks like the symbiote spider-man suit but i think it's the one i mentioned before because you know this one has purple in it zooming out from the right we have marvel spider-man from the insomniac 2018 spider-man game his advanced suit the one next to him looks like dear miles morales in the game as well but the color seems a, a little bit off Continuing from there, this looks like the anti-kingpin suit that Spider-Man wore in the 2020s Amazing Spider-Man issue 62 comics. Next is the Spider-Man Ammo Mark II, a bulletproof suit from the 2011's Amazing Spider-Man issue 656, which Spider-Man wore to protect himself from bullets when his spider sense was failing him. Now here we have a woman in the Future Foundation suit worn in Fantastic Four issue 1 2011 comics, FF for short, when Spider-Man joined their team. Now zooming further out, we now have Mary Jane Watson from a universe where Peter Parker designed a suit that will mimic his abilities for her. She went by his superhero name Spinnerette. Next to her is her daughter Annie Parker, who went by the superhero name Spiderling, who inherited Peter Parker's powers, you know, with her father. And then they were both introduced in the Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Virus comics in 2015. We now have Spider Cop from the issue 4 of Spider Gideon. The 2018 PlayStation game, Spider-Man always joked about that being a spider Spider Cop as a joke, but funny enough, he made his way into the comics, and now here we are. When Spider Cop's on the job, come hell or high water, the job gets. Nope, nope, nope. We have here the manga verse Spider-Man from the manga universe. Now this looks like the Iron Spider-Man suit, the original one from the Civil War comics. This Spider-Man pops up later in the trailer, much more clearer. Next year we have Lady Spider, who is a young Aunt May in an alternate universe in the 19th century, who built her own mechanical enhanced suit. This suit here looks like the one Peter Parker wore in the Fear Itself comics issue 7 in 2011, when it was powered by Asgardian magic. Now this year kind of looks like Spider Side in the comics. Amazing Spider-Man issue 399 in 1995, a genetically modified clone of Peter Parker who was designed to kill him. And this year looks like Ultimate Spider-Woman's costume, at least a variation of it. We now zoom out further and from the left we have a look at another future foundation Spider-Man suit but this Spidey is a man. Then we have the negative Spider-Man suit from the Insomnia game. We have here the bombastic Bagman who in the comics after Peter's costume was damaged, he borrowed the suit from the Fantastic Four and put a brown bag to hide the secret identity but it looks like there's a slight variation of it to his suit you know saying Sony doesn't own the right to Fantastic Four. And here I think that's supposed to be Spider-Man UK. Then here we have Werewolf Spider-Man or Spider-Wolf. Yeah, in an alternate universe there's Spider-Man who is a wolf. And at the far left here this costume looks like the Cosmic Spider-Man suit where Peter Parker bonded with the Cosmic Power Enigma Force to become Captain Universe in the Amazing Spider-Man 328 comics in 1990 and made other appearances in the Spider-Verse events comics recently in the spider Gideon. And this Spider-Man has to be Flash Thompson Spider-Man who in another universe gains the powers of Spider-Man instead of Peter Parker but he didn't have the Sportsman Leatherman jacket but since Flash Thompson is known for wearing that I guess they put it on him. 
And now, as we see different spider people chasing Miles, we see Superior Spider-Man, who in another universe, Dr. Octopus, takes over the mind of Peter Parker, taking over his body and living his life. And he dons this costume as Spider-Man. And right here, this looks to be Anya Corazon Spider-Girl, a Mexican Puerto Rican teen living in New York who gets the powers when a group called the Spider Society performed the ritual on her by giving her a magical spider tattoo. Then we see a six-armed Spider-Man tackling Miles. This could be the Spider-Man who, in an alternate universe, drinks a potion to enhance his abilities, but instead, it gives him four more arms making him look like a spider of some sort. Further on the left, this looks like Mayday Parker's spider girl. We've already seen a child version of her, you know, Peter B. Parker's kid. This could be an alternate future version of her or another universe version of her. Now here we have Spider-Man wearing the Silver Mark 1 suit in the comics Web of Spider-Man issue 100 and was also in the 90s TV show. Now right here we have the Electroproof Mark 3 Spidey suit. It also looks like the Spider-Man Zero suit from the Fortnite game but I think it's more of the Mark 3 suit. And right here, this looks like the costume that Tom Holland Spider-Man wore in Far From Home. There are some rumors and sources that he's going to be in the movie alongside Tobey Maguire and the rest. I don't know whether it's going to be true or not, but we'll wait and see. We now move to another shot. And here, this design looks like that of Kane's Scarlet Spider-Man suit. And this year, this dad bought Spider-Man looks like FX Spider-Man, an older semi-retired Peter Parker from an alternate universe in the future. And right here, this Spider-Man's costume and design looks like that of the classic villain Shulk. And this here looks like the classic version of Jessica Drew Spider Woman. And at the left corner here, we have Spider Monkey, who's from an alternate universe, an alternate Earth where the dominant species are monkeys and apes, like you know, Planet of the Apes style. Then here we have the PlayStation 1 Spider Man, <laughs> you can't believe he's here. Then moving on, we have the Poison Spider Man, you know, the alien symbiote poison like Venom. As you can see in the background, there are probably hundreds of spider people chasing after Miles. What did he do? Or what is he trying to do that they're trying? to stop him as the spider people keep chasing him we have another shot where i can't believe it spider-man unlimited from the 90s show we then have webman from the spidey super stories issue 25 an evil inverse clone spider-man you know he has his suit colors in reverse and here it looks like we have Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider-Man. We then see other Spider people that we've already mentioned before, like Manga Spider vs Spider-Man, who we can now clearly see. Now that's it for all the Spider people that I could spot. I think I saw Silk somewhere, but I can't see it after I first saw it. Like it's driving me crazy. If I see it, I will point it out. Now back to the beginning when I said that the movie had ties with Endgame. You see all the Spider people. They all have one thing in common, and that is they all have some wristband or watch or some kind. Some sort of time watch that I think that they are using to travel the multiverse, similar to what Tony Stark created in Avengers Endgame to help the Avengers navigate and travel the quantum realm. This device, though, on the Spider People is created by Miguel O'Hara, Spider Man 2099, and his AI partner Layla. Now, with everything going on in the MCU at this point, it's safe to say that all these Spider People, all these variants, are part of the larger multiverse that is opening and unfolding in the MCU as part of the multiverse saga. Even Miles and Gwen travel. Traveling through the multiverse is much like Avengers did in Endgame and I don't know whether it's also the quantum realm or maybe different side of it we don't know maybe it will be explained in the movie hopefully so now that's it for the video I think this is going to be one of the craziest and biggest superhero movies of all time next year I can't wait let me know in the comments below what you thought of all these spider people and who is your favorite spider-man if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe turn on that post notification bell not to miss any other video as always Ned is AJ. See you guys in the next one. We are supposed to be the good guys. We are.